Another useful object in vPython is the curve object. This is a function that allows you to create uh, basically an arbitrary shape uh, to look like whatever you want. It creates an outline of the shape that you want in three dimensions. Um, in order to specify a curve, we have to give a list of points uh, here as the position argument. This is kind of the most basic way you can define a curve in vPython. So this has to be a list object. We've talked about lists before. Uh, probably the easiest way to make a list is to just start out with an empty list. So here we've got the open uh, bracket, close bracket, and then just append the items that you want to the list. So in this case, we're appending two points, uh, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0. So notice our points are defined using the vector function so that the position argument here understands that we're talking about an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a z coordinate. And so then to create the curve, we're going to call it my underscore curve. We just use the curve function and give it the argument position equals list of points. And so what this will do, this will give us a curve drawn between these two points. And of course, a curve specified by just two points is a line. So here we get a line going from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0 out along the x-axis. So this is a pretty useful way if you, if you need some visual references for your code. Uh, this is a pretty useful way to create x, y, and z axes because you could then create one going uh, up to 0, 1, 0, and then one out to 0, 0, 1. But of course, it's called a curve. This thing is not curving very much. In order to get it to bend, we've got to give more than two points. Um, and one of the ways we can do that, we can either add to the list here. So I could give this one, let's say, 1, 1, 0. So then I'll make an L shape. There's, there's one option. The other option is to append points. So I can also uh, use the append function on the curve. So if I take my name here, my curve, copy and paste, I can use the append function and append another point. Let's go with 0, 1, 0. And what it does is adds this point to the curve. And so this is pretty useful because you can define your curve early on in the code and then have the code figure out which points it wants to add one at a time if you're doing some kind of like pipe building animation or a random walk or something like that. Now you notice that the curve does not by default close back on itself so it follows the points in the order that they're given. If I were to swap uh, two of these points, let's suppose I take our uh, right bottom point and place it here in the order, now my curve is following this order. It's going from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0, then down to 1, 0, 0, and then up to 0, 1, 0. So the curve is going to follow whatever order the points are given in. Now you'll notice that the curve does not close back in on itself. It doesn't go back to the original point. You can implement that easily by using a couple of functions. We can use the mycurve.append like we've had before, and we can access the points in mycurve by using mycurve.point and then giving the index of the point we want to reference. So if I say my curve dot point of zero, that's going to give me the original point in the curve, and then it's gonna append that point again to the end of the curve, and that will give us a closed pattern. So it starts in this corner, goes up to here, comes down to this corner, goes up to here, and then comes back down to this corner. So that's a quick and easy way you can get a curve to close in on itself uh, without having to actually know the coordinate of the uh, original point. Another neat thing you can do is you can change the origin of the curve. So if you wanted to take this entire curve and shift it uh, in a certain direction, uh, you can change the curve's origin value. So I can say my curve dot origin, uh, oops, and just set that equal to whatever point you want it to, uh, let's see, is that gonna be this? Yeah, whatever point you want it to start at. Uh, so let's set this to vector, let's go with negative 1, comma, 0, comma, 1. So it'll be over to the left and out of the screen a little bit. And you notice it moved over to the left and it's out of the screen compared to where we were before. So this is a neat way you can create a curve object and then move it around on the screen without having to move all of the individual points. Now, of course, this curve is looking pretty jagged because I've made the points pretty far apart. The closer together you place the points, the smoother the curve will look. I want to demonstrate that for you by creating a circle here at the end of the video. So let's give our circle a radius of, let's go with 0 0.5, and let's set up a d theta here. So we're going to go around a circle in very small steps. So let's go with pi over 10, 
And so we'll just do a little loop here. We'll start out with theta equal to zero. We'll say while theta is less than or equal to two pi. So that we go all the way around the circle. And oh, I need another list of points. So I need my, let's call it circle list. Again, we'll start out with an empty list here. And we'll just add to the circle, circle underscore list dot pinned. And circular coordinates are just going to be r times cosine theta, comma r times sine of theta, just a little, just like on the unit circle. Um, I guess we're doing a half unit circle here with a radius of a half. And then we'll increment theta, theta equals theta plus d theta. And then we'll make a circle equal to a curve with the circle list. And I should not need to append the original point because I'm going from zero to two pi, so that should take care of counting that original point twice. But let's see how this comes out. Oh, and let's do one other thing. Uh, I forgot to put pause here. Let's also give this thing a different color. Let's make it color equals color dot red. As with many other objects, you can specify the color. Oops, I did make one mistake. I forgot to make this into a vector. So it's just a list of numbers right now, not a list of vector points. There we go. Uh, I got two parentheses there. All right, let's hit control two. And there you have it. There's our circle. You notice it's a little bit jagged looking. Uh, that's because it's really 20, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's because it's really 20 line segments. So if we make this step size smaller, let's go pi over 50. It'll become even smoother. There's a nice smooth circle for you. So as always, feel free to take this code from the link in the description below. Play around with it. Let me know what kind of fun drawings you can make by giving a set of points. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.